<laughs> Good evening. I call to order this uh, Jackson Public School District Board of Trustees meeting, May 15th, 2018. Uh, Dr. Lakeisha Marshall Thomas, are you here? You're going to introduce our student who will give the Pledge of Allegiance. Lead us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm going to introduce Mr. Valerie King. Cadet Valerie King is a scholar athlete leader and the son of Ferdinand and Maureen Gung. Cadet King is a proud member of the National Honor Society with a 3.6 GPA and serves as a Youth Academy Ambassador and Mr. Junior. He is a member of the Wingfield High School track and field, cross country, and soccer team. He enjoys playing drums in the Wingfield High School marching band. Cadet King is extremely active in JRTC Fal Falcon Battalion. He is captain of the JRTC Adventure Training Unit co-captain of the JRTC STEM and Cadet Challenge Team. He also serves as the commander of the Armed Regulation Drill Team. Currently, Cadet King serves as the Wingfield High School JRTC Falcon Battalion Public Affairs Officer and was recently selected to serve as Mr. Wingfield for school year 2018-2019. He has participated in numerous leadership camps such as National Flight Academy in Pensacola, Florida, JRTC Cadet Leadership Camp in Camp Shelby, JSU Nanotoxicity Summer Institute Program, and was selected Superior Cadet because of his academic and leadership skills. Cadet King plans to attend basic training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina this summer. His future vision is to become a Naval Engineer Officer in the United States Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring greeting from Wingfield High School. At this time, if you may please stand and join me to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I will be reciting the Pledge of Allegiance in French and then in English. Jange, ma fidelité, au drapeau des États-Unis de l'Amérique, et à la République à qui représente une nation, c'est Dieu, avec liberté et justice pour tous. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, if you may please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance in English. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Next, we will have our moment of inspiration shared by Reverend Willie Tobias, Jr. Reverend Tobias. Reverend Tobias has nine years of pastoral experience and is currently pastor of New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Jackson. Reverend Tobias serves in the transportation ministry for the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated and is the second vice president for the Jackson District Congress of Christian Education. He has a bachelor's degree in business administration from DeVry University, a bachelor's in biblical studies from Belhaven University, a master's degree in pastoral leadership from Indiana Wesleyan University, and a master's degree in practical theology. Reverend Tobias is married to the beautiful Monica Tobias, and God has blessed them with three wonderful children, one son and two daughters. Pastor Tobias is a born again Christian who loves the Lord and his motto is, God is good even when we are not. Please welcome Reverend Willie Tobias Jr. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, good evening uh, to each of you ladies and gentlemen and to the members of this uh, board of trustees I am. Uh, so honored and humbled to have this opportunity to stand before you uh, this evening to offer words of encouragement. Uh, Solomon, who some would consider the wisest man who has ever lived, uh, says some very practical and important words. He says uh, to train up a child in the way that he should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I believe real briefly that that word train is extremely significant and important. 
we must ask ourselves, what does it mean to train? Uh, I believe if you take each letter in the word train, and if we as leaders, if we as community leaders, uh, members of this board, if we would implement each letter uh, in the word train, then we will uh, be doing exactly what Solomon uh, suggests. T, I believe, is for teaching. Uh, as leaders in this community, it is imperative to understand that every child deserves good teaching. Uh, regardless of where he or she may live, regardless of where they're from, every child deserves to be taught. Uh, R is for the ability to remember. Not necessarily for the child to remember, but as adults and leaders, we must remember. Now, someone may raise the question, what should we as board members, we as leaders and teachers, what should we remember? I think it's important for us to remember how we were as children. Because if we remember how we were as children, it would cause us to be patient with other children. Uh, a is for uh, ability. Every child has a unique ability within them. Uh, there is something that all of us do well. We must figure out what our unique ability is. I is for involvement. Now is the time. As we see, as we recall things that are going on in this city, in our schools, now is the time for us to become actively involved. Uh, you see the basketball playoffs going on television right now. Now is not the time for leaders to be on the bench. But now is the time for us to become actively involved in the affairs of our children. Lastly, the letter N stands for necessary. Training our children is not an option, but it is our obligation. That literally means it is absolutely, positively necessary. So in summary, we must teach our children. We must remember how we were as children. Uh, we must remember that all children have a unique ability. We must get involved in the lives of our children, and we must understand that it's not an option, but it becomes our obligation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Would you pause for a photograph? Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Tobias. <clears throat> Let the record show that we have established a quorum as all board members are present and seated. <clears throat> uh, do <clears throat> we have before us the agenda? Do I hear a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? <clears throat> so moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. <clears throat> aye. aye. It's been moved and seconded and they voted aye that to adopt the agenda. Item four, reading and approving of the minutes from our May 1 board meeting. Uh, Ms. Williams distributed the minutes earlier. Do I hear a motion to accept the minutes as distributed? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 The May 1 board meetings have been approved. Thank you, Ms. Williams. <coughs> Public participation for general comments and or proposed policy issues. Board members, you have two persons who have signed up to address you this evening. The first is, I believe, Letha Goodman, who'd like to address you on holding parents accountable, discipline, studying, reading. I think this may be ECFs or ECTs. Thank you all for your service. Thank you. Ms. Goodman? Goodman. Good afternoon. Um, as a parent in, of, a, of a child 
in JPS Public School. I myself as a parent have had um, dealt with discipline issues with my own daughter. And um, I do want to encourage you all to continue. I want to emphasize the word to continue to um, encourage discipline in the schools. I want to encourage you all to continue to hold parents accountable. And I want to continue, I want to encourage you all to continue to keep in mind that there are parents as myself who are willing to be okay with allowing the fact that it does take a village to raise a child. And I just want to encourage you all because I know that it is not easy <laughs> dealing with all our children. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Thank you so much, Ms. Goodman. We appreciate those remarks. Next is Germany Gray, which would like, who would like to address you on sex ed classes in JPS. Germany Gray? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. A little taller and so up. <laughs> so, good evening. Again, my name is Germany Gray, and I am a senior at Murrow High School. And I would like to start off with thank you all for allowing me to voice my concerns tonight. And, but with that said, um, my concern deals with the institution of sex ed classes in JPS. Um, in 2011, J well, Mississippi passed a house bill that mandated that all public um, districts, uh, they mandated that public districts have sex ed classes. And in response to that, um, our district, we adopted a chart policy, which is um, the policy that chart stands for um, creating healthy and responsible teams. And this means basically that we adopted an evidence-based and age-appropriate uh, curriculum. Doing this was a huge step in the right direction. But to complete the, tra the uh, transition into a state where we have lower teen pregnancies and, and transmissions of STDs, it will require more than, one, just, more than just one big step. And I say this because currently, even though we have such an amazing curriculum set in place, people are still not being educated properly about how to have a healthy sex life. And I know this because personally, um, through my, throughout my 12 years at, uh, as a JPS scholar, I have not had a sex ed class. And a lot of my fellow students have also not had a sex ed class. And a few people who did have a sex ed class, um, the class that they did have was very erratic and it wasn't as um, consistent as needed to effectively inform them about how to have a healthy sex life in, their, in the upcoming future. And I know I can't say speak for all of the high schools in JPS, but I know from my own experience it's, there is definitely some that don't have some. And I, I know maybe we're a rare, rarity, but <laughs> If there's one, there might be another one, and that needs to be fixed. So I come before you to humbly ask that you um, evaluate all of the JPS um, high schools, middle schools, and why evaluate them to see if the classes are being taught. And if it is being taught, to make sure it's being consistently taught so that our scholars can properly learn about how to have a healthy sex life. So in closing, I'll leave you with this quote. Uh, it's kind of like a nice little saying I like to say a lot. Um, I feel like in schools we learn how to read, we learn how to write, and we learn how to spell. So why can't we learn how to have a healthy, how to have a healthy sex life? Thank you for allowing me to voice my concern again, and I hope you all have a good evening. Thank you so much, Jeremy. We appreciate those remarks. That's all. Is Dr. Burns here? Dr. Sinovia Burns? Where is it? Thank you. Please come forward. From GNC Smith Elementary School, counselor. Yes, please. Wherever you feel most comfortable. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. To Dr. Murray, to the president of the school board, Dr. Harrison, as well as the entire school board, and to those who are visiting with us today. It gives me an honor to stand before you on behalf of the partnership of Healthy Mississippi to let you know the great things that have been happening at G.N. Smith Elementary. 
Having served at GN Smith for the past 20 years and now inclusively as the facilitator of our team, we have actually served for four years as part of the teams that have um, collaborated with the Partnership of Healthy Mississippi. With that being said, it actually helps us to promote a healthy school among our scholars as well as our staff. With that, we have actually met continuously over the four years with a team that has consisted of our community, our students, and our staff, as well as our administration to actually develop activities and events that would actually host and hopefully promote positive and healthy living among our scholars as well as our staff. And with that, there are eight components in which we have addressed over the four years. We actually design action plans to address these needs. We identify our strengths and weaknesses and design accordingly. With that, for the past four years, we've done things such as created and developed a health fair where we had over 80 uh, vendors throughout that day to come and actually collaborate and, and actually provide for our students information, brochures, and other things that would promote healthiness throughout the school year. Also, the parents were able to come as well as the participation of the staff. We had community speakers such as Nick Wallace, who are, he's a professional chef, to come and he actually prepared a healthy meal before our students and actually showed them ways and gave them the recipes that they could actually use and promoted them at home so that they can eat healthy. We know that a healthy mind comes from being having a healthy body. So also we've had the physical activity and this is where this component has really helped develop to provide equipment for our physical education department which has really grown tremendously having what our students need in order to grow and to be better students throughout the year. Um, breakfast in the classroom, increasing healthy habits, going bananas for a healthy lifestyle. We walked for watermelon and water. So we try to create these themes that actually um, involve our students and actually are captivating and engaging to them. And by all means, we include our staff because we always know that without a healthy staff, we don't have the people there to actually instruct our students and our scholars. So therefore, we had bike, um, bicycle safety, school healthy tips of the, on the monthly calendar, read over the announcements every morning. This is just a gist of the things that we've done over the four years, and we would just wanted to share that with our school board and let you know there are great things happening because of the partnership of A Healthy Mississippi. They have been diligent in making sure that we're trained properly and that we're able to utilize proper techniques in order to promote healthiness throughout our school. And with your support, and we say thank you for over the four years that you have supported us and given us that um, appreciation and time that you have granted us in order to this, for this to happen. And tonight, um, we just want to let you know those are the great things that are happening at GN Smith, and we thank you for all that you've done over the years, and we hope that you will continue to do. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Burns. Item six, review of discipline cases, Dr. Knox. We have no cases. Uh, item seven, the superintendent's report. Good evening, um, Madam President, board members, um, and audience. Uh, before we um, bring up our, our CAP report, just uh, we'd like to uh, report that we did receive some preliminary data from our third grade um, gate. Uh, and uh, we, uh, as a district, we increased slightly. Uh, we had an 89.1% passage rate for first time uh, testing. We tested about 2,000, about 2,300 uh, students, uh, a couple hundred more than last year. Last year we were at 88%. Uh, this year again we're at 89%. 89.1% after the first uh, test. This is um, the map which students had to score two or better. Uh, we do not, we'll be bringing you back some uh, disaggregated data on what students scored by level, but currently, again, we do have uh, the data by school and we'll bring that back to you, but just overall, as a district, uh, we were at 89.1%, which is an increase. Uh, and again, we feel confident that uh, on the retest, uh, we will prepare those students uh, the students that did not pass uh, to be successful. And then of course there's a process by which there are students that may have um, 
good cause exemptions for, for many reasons. So again, just wanted to give you that preliminary data uh, and you can look forward to additional information on uh, third grade gate. Thank you. Uh, when is the retest? Um, this week. Oh, okay, great. This week. Well, good the luck. retest okay. is uh, Renaissance, correct? So the map is the initial test, the state test that everyone else, everyone, everyone takes. And then uh, the star assessment that you all have seen data on a couple of times this year is what we use to retest our students. Okay. And we've you. typically uh, increased uh, six, five, six percent on the retest, and then many of our students do qualify for good cause exemption that will allow them to uh, to move on. So uh, once we capture all that data, we'll bring that back to you all in a formal report. But just wanted to give you that that information. Do we have a sense of how we fit in the state? In uh, we we do not have any statewide data. That's kind of one of the reasons why we didn't why we didn't go into any detail because we try to stay. <laughs> Uh, we don't want to get ahead of the state, but we did want to inform the board as to where we are. But we should get that information in short order okay. um, as it relates to statewide. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, at this time, uh, Dr. Merritt will come with our cap report. Good evening, Dr. Hairston and Board of Trustees and Dr. Murray. Um, you have a, an update in your uh, board material. Um, we are moving uh, forward anxiously uh, as well as cautiously um, as we are preparing to clear standards. Um, of course, all of those, all standards that involve instruction, we are submitting the request to follow up ASAP. Uh, it's important to note that uh, to the best of our ability, we have verified that we are 100% compliant. Um, we were uh, cautioned by MDE in the past just not to do a follow-up unless we were sure. And of course, once Dr. Murray has affixed his signature to the sheet, we are verifying that we are compliant with that standard to the best of our ability. So some standard leaders are having to do some additional follow-up to make sure that we are compliant with um, uh, the standards. There are several that have been noted in your material. Um, that calls for some concerns. Um, but overall, uh, again, I feel that we're moving, we're progressing uh, in a positive uh, manner. Um, we have received some, uh, some verbal feedback, nothing yet in writing that uh, things look better. So um, we will just continue to operate with a sense of urgency and making sure that we are uh, implementing the corrective action plan as outlined. Thank you. On the items of concern, will they be ad addressed at least one of them by July 31st? Okay. So we have uh, for two requested some additional TA mm -hmm. and um, from the department uh, on and they have responded and we're going to uh, get a date to get some feedback and um, that's standard 17.8 and 26. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the other is really how we are onboarding right. for next year and some things, how we address that uh, in the uh, upcoming year. Right. Okay, well that, you identified the two. I, was, I thought there might be some <laughs> okay. positive news there. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. That is superintendent's report. Thank you. Uh, item eight, information items only. Uh, we will hear from our assistant superintendents with an update on our schools at risk action plans. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. Belcher. I'm an assistant superintendent for Area One. I only have 36 pages to talk about. <laughs> no, I just can't. <laughs> Uh, my two schools tonight will be Wolver Heights and Oak Forest. Uh, we'll begin with uh, Wolver Heights uh, for the update from their plan. Uh, they have professional development on the MDE writing rubric. Um, their student ADA increased from 94.38% to 95.37%. Um, all their drills are up to date. Um, they are now in the process of prepping for transfer. They're one of the schools that teachers are transferred that is closed down, Wolver Heights is. Um, also, we have the MAP testing. 
Uh, we are continuously preparing for the MDE audits throughout the year as we close out. Um, to give you an accelerated reader update, we've, we've cut that off because of uh, all the testing. Um, we, we began in second nine weeks with accelerated reader um, for Wivel Heights. Uh, the first time that we did it, they read uh, 3 million 75 1,117 words with 3,148 books with 83% comprehension. So our final numbers for Wilbur Heights, they read 14,930,561 words with 11,655 books with an 82.97 comprehension rate. Um, to go over to Oak Forest, Oak Forest had a pretty large month this year. They had a few celebrities show up. <laughs> At the school, um, they had 250 students that would receive free summer reading books purchased by First Lady, Miss Deborah Bryant, and Percy Miller, which we all know as Master P. He was there, uh, along with the governor, the mayor, the superintendent, a number of board members. Uh, were all, it's all purpose for helping um, deliver vision, brighter futures, and um, 361 students were given vision screens. Um, there was $4,000 has been donated to Oak Forest by the Jackson Junior League through the Book Buddy program for summer reading, which allows for students to receive two, two books for free in the summertime. Um, they're also map testing, also continuing with the MDE audits. Um, to give you an update on their accelerated reader for second nine weeks, which that was the first nine weeks we started, they read 2,149 words. 2,149,245 words with 1,114 books with 71% comprehension. Their final numbers was 11,606,909 with 6,738 books with 76% comprehension. As an area one feeder with seven schools, um, Forest Hill was our only school that did not have Accelerator Reader. Uh, we read, um, 204,658,185 words with 79,604 books and a 72% comprehension rate. And that is my update. Thank you. That's a question. Uh, Dr. Belcher, you mentioned um, students prepping for transfer. I was wondering if you could share what's being done to help facilitate the transfer. Yes, uh, we met today um, about transfers and um, about to get some literature out to to different parents, and uh, I think Dr. Mm -hmm. Mary is going to elaborate a little bit more. Yeah. Well, we're finalizing um, the move so we can communicate to parents, specific parents, mm -hmm. uh, where the students will be going. You know, we did an overall um, announcement on where students could possibly go. Uh, we've been narrowing that down, working with transportation, uh, looking at zones, making sure that we don't overcrowd schools, looking at space. So we've been um, doing an in-depth analysis to make sure that we have a uh, cohesive transition when school starts and so we are next week uh, we'll be meeting with principals uh, later this week the principals of sending and receiving schools and we'll be sending uh, a notice uh, um, a consistent notice that's the same for every child uh, out letting them know where their schools will be uh, for next year so that that's what we're fo focusing on now making sure that the spaces where we're moving children will be ready for them uh, that there are no issues uh, with uh, classroom size, teachers, all of that. So that, that's where we are now. That, that's the prepping that we've been doing. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Murray, mm -hmm. will there be an opportunity for parents to tour the schools? Uh, yes, we, um, <coughs> we can make that available uh, in short order, but generally what, what we would do is have uh, uh, an opportunity for the new parents mm -hmm. before uh, the opportunity for everyone else. Uh, and so we, we, we can uh, create a consistent uh, plan for that, but generally we'll have an open house whereby those parents have an opportunity to come out for new and, you know, for um, generally is for, um, when we think about high schools, every year we do something for incoming students to ninth grade and new students. So we could do that same type thing for these students that are new to the school and, uh, before we do the one for all students. So we can make sure we have an open house for those students in those schools. Okay. We'll put that together. And we need to let those parents know before mm -hmm. school is out that you're going to have something for them. Yes. We, the yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Good evening. This time mm-hmm. is six o'clock. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. good evening. Um, I will be presenting for area two. I'm Lakeisha Thomas, the assistant superintendent. That we have five schools uh, representing area two that are schools at risk. The first school is French Elementary School, and we just have two highlights. The first highlight is the average scale score for pre-K on the K readiness assessment was 558. And 11 out of 13 students met the required score of a 498. Eight students scored 530 and above and are considered kindergarten ready. And as far as our third grade reading scores for French, last year um, on our first time assessment, our students scored um, 70% of our students passed. This year, 89% of our students passed, which is a 19 percentage points. So I would like Ms. Clark to stand so that we can uh, recognize her for the 19 points. Great job. Next we have um, Ms. Bridges with Lester Elementary School, two highlights as well. To date, um, only kindergarten MCAS data is available in addition to our new third grade reading scores. And the average scale score grew from 476 at the beginning of the year to 663 with 187 point increase for that one. Also, for our third grade assessment last year, first time test, 87% of our students passed. This year, 92% of our students passed, which is five percentage points. So I would like for Ms. Bridges to stand as well. Mm-hmm. Yay. Marshall Elementary School, two highlights. Vision to Learn paired up with Marshall Elementary School this year because of them, 122 scholars received glasses the month of April. Marshall screened 364 students. Of the 364 students that were screened, 154 students failed the vision screening. The number of students who passed the vision screen was 211. So the number of students who actually received glasses were 122 students um, because of vision to learn. Also with uh, Marshall Elementary School last year, first assessment, 90% of our students passed. This year, 91% of our students passed. So an increase of one percentage points. So let's give Ms. Young a round of applause. (laughs) Next we have Raines Elementary School. Two highlights and Ms. Um, Ms. Owens had car trouble coming, and I just told her we, she'd be fine, just get a car taken care of. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've increased our ADA actually to 95% for the month of April. Um, for the third grade reading assessment, 87% pass rate last year. This year is 96%. Mm-hmm. She increased nine mm-hmm. points. Mm-hmm. So that is a great accomplishment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is. And uh, last, we have Wilkins Elementary School. We had 100% participation on our third grade summative assessment. So she assessed all of her third grade students with 100% participation rate. Last year, the passing rate was 80%. This year, it was 85%, so a five-point percentage point increase. Mm -hmm. So let's give um, Ms. Cheryl Brown a round of applause. Great job. You all have any questions for area two? So for area two, our average rate was 90%. So out of all 10 elementary schools, we had a pass rate of 90%. Great, that's excellent. Thank you so much for that report. You are welcome. Any questions for Dr. Thomas? Thank you. And we'd like to publicly thank uh, Vision to Learn. Uh, They've been providing support uh, for the last couple of years, but uh, I I never thought about it, but 80% of what we learn, we learn visually. Mm And if students can't see, they can't learn. So 130 students receiving glasses at one school, 60 at another school, uh, that's huge for uh, for our students and will help us, uh, Mm -hmm. they're great partners in helping us do what we need to do in this this district. Do they provide continuing um, treatment for (coughs) both the children who receive glasses and, you know, in future years as these children Uh, continue to have more needs? Yes, well, they're committed to partnering with the district um, and so each year, you know, they're here. Uh, and so, again, we, we provide the schools and they provide the support. So I think the commitment is strong um, for helping. All right, good evening. Uh, Mr. Hanna, Area 3. Uh, I'll be doing a report on four of my schools. Uh, currently at Brown Elementary, uh, update since the last time they provided you all with the information. Uh, on May 3rd, Brown uh, staff commi- participate in professional development in Title III required components of kindergarten. They received pictures of required centers, 
develop centered air ideas and thematic unit details. Uh, the principal received a deeper understanding of new kindergarten guidelines. Uh, student of the month was selected by the homeroom teacher. Students were given a snack certificate and taken a picture with staff. Two teachers were chosen as staff of the month. Uh, they received the jeans and sneaker pass, a plaque, and a personalized letter from the principal and a gift card. Uh, promotional ceremonies will be held on uh, May 23rd for Brown. Johnson Elementary, uh, currently they uh, had uh, last, a couple weeks ago, they did a pre-K screening, screening training for principals and teachers. Uh, they're continuously doing frontline PD requirements for staff. Uh, they had a Ask for Arts uh, exhibit on May 10th. Uh, school adopter book buddy end of the year celebration. Um, Pre-K and kindergarten awards day program was um, Monday, May the 11th. And also today they did uh, men of honor and gyms program. Uh, fifth grade promotion today will be held on May 22nd. Dawson Elementary significant highlights was a culmination of uh, National School Library Month with donations from various items such as toys, stickers, crayons, batteries, coloring books, Play-Doh, etc from our PBS, for our PBS store, from the Heinz Community College Library. We'd like to thank the Heinz Community College Library for those donations to Dawson. Uh, May 11th, at the end of the year reflection and goal setting meeting will be held, was held with the MD Literacy Coach. Awards program for student staff, parents, and community members will be held May 21st through 23rd. The next P16 site council meeting for Dawson is scheduled for June 5th. Walton Elementary, uh, PBS 2's for Life, they did a refreshing building level uh, staff meeting. A fifth grade science STEM workshop was taking place at the Ag Museum for the staff members at uh, Walton. Uh, Pre-K screening training also was conducted there. PK, I mean, kindergarten PD for standard 17.1 was held. Uh, teacher and classified staff have continued to work toward the required professional development points uh, for this upcoming year. Uh, field day will be held on May 22nd. Awards day will be held on May 18th. Fifth grade promotion day will be May 21st. And Cade Chapel summer book giveaway will be held on May 22nd. We'd like to thank Cade Chapel uh, for their support and adoption as well. Have any questions? No, thank you. That was a very uplifting report. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. No, oh, Mr. Hannon, just one quick question. I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure I had a date. Is the P16 council meeting at Dawson on June 5th? Did yes, I hear that? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That's yes. The, the council. The P, it involves community members. Yes, and, sir. Uh -huh. Okay, okay right. great. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right, last but not least, mm -hmm. uh, Area 4, um, and, and good evening, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Dr. That's Murray, me. Board President, Dr. Harrison, and members. Want to highlight some things that are going on uh, at Green Elementary? We have an interim super, uh, interim principal uh, filling in for the principal that's been out for a while, and so we want to highlight that professional development has continued with under the uh, su with the support of the Mississippi Department of Education and their literacy coach. They've also um, been conducting or planning to conduct activities end of the year celebrations and parents have been invited to do a needs assessment survey to get input for school improvement for the upcoming school year. At John Hopkins, again, professional development has been conducted by the uh, Mississippi Department of Ed Literacy Coach. Also, they are celebrating their students who have mastered content and um, have uh, performed and had uh, conduct performance positive behavior, so they're doing celebratory events uh, during this month to close out the school year. The site council will have a meeting on May 17th this week uh, to discuss commendations, recommendations, and next steps for the academic school year. At North Jackson, again, um, MDE will be providing summer professional development uh, for the staff in the months of June and July. Uh, the school has celebrated, uh, had celebrations and academic recognition programs, and they have inducted members into the Beta Club as well as the National Elementary Honor Society. I do want to pause on, on North Jackson. My grandbaby is in the third grade, and his class had 100% passing. <laughs> so I do want to highlight Mrs. Walker's class at North Jackson Elementary. And at Kirksey Middle School, again, Kirksey continues to implement their uh, action plan. They have the green education uh, services and uh, still conducting math uh, support with the 
pretty much finished now since we're in the testing. But I do want to highlight their Boys to Men forum that she mentioned the last time. I did have a chance to stop by and it was an amazing event. Had members from, male members from the community, from the mayor's office, from all um, uh, avenues and uh, uh, workforce there. Uh, almost a one-to-one -one or one-to-five uh, participation with an adult male to the children there. And it was an amazing event. And so those are the highlights for the schools in Area 4. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Be sure and give our hearty encouragement from the board to our principals who are conducting this hard work every day with your teams. It's very important, and we appreciate your taking the time to come and share with us. And um, Dr. Moore, I'm, I'm reminded we need well, I need help in finding where these reports are on our board page. Remember we said we were gonna make the reports available? Mm. Can you remind me how to find that? Okay. Thank you. Oh, yes, we'll, we'll provide that information. Okie doke, with Sandra Lyons, uh, Ms. Sherilyn Miller, <laughs> Administrator Location Change. Thank you, Dr. School Harrison. School year 18 19. Thank you, Dr. Harrison, Dr. Murray, members of the board. I present for your information only the administrative location change included in your board material. Okay, go. Board, we received this material earlier. Do you have questions or comments for Ms. Miller? Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Item C, Dr. Davidson, Gifted Education Program. Good evening, Dr. Harrison, Dr. Murray, and members of the board. I present to you the Gifted Education Program Evaluation Report. I did read the evaluation report, but I'm not sure that I understand. Okay. What, what, okay. We, I understand the guidelines from mm -hmm. the Department of Education mm -hmm. and the requirements of the district, but is that evaluating JPS or the form that's going to be used to evaluate JPS? Uh, the, the attachment is actually the evaluation instrument that was used by the Mississippi Department of Education, mm -hmm. and there are seven criteria for which mm -hmm. we were evaluated. Uh, the first criteria is curriculum and instruction. The second is program administration and management. The third is program design. Four is program evaluation, followed by social and emotional development for our gifted education program students. Six is professional development, and seven is student identification and assessment. Mm -hmm. And I am happy to report that we either meet or exceed all criteria mm -hmm. as listed in the standards document. Mm -hmm. Do we have that actual report from MDE? Yes, I do have the actual report that is from the Mississippi Department mm -hmm. of Education, and it was provided to me through email. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I intend to do, along with the additional two staff members that I have in the office, is actually to go through the report and to provide it in a format that is readily and friendly to the public, because uh, as the email that I have right now, it is difficult to understand and I wanna ensure that everyone, our parents, our, our stakeholders and community members who support the advanced learning programs in our district are actually able to read, to read it without additional insight. So that information will be forthcoming? Yes, it will be forthcoming. Thank you. Um, when can we expect the report? I actually have a meeting scheduled with them tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. Okay, so mm -hmm. end of next week? No, it will be by the end of this week. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, Dr. Merritt mentioned that 17.8, uh, the accountability standard 17.8 for gifted education requested additional technical assistance mm -hmm. as it related to the CAP. I had the opportunity to speak with the gifted education specialist with the Mississippi Department of Education on yesterday, and I'm also happy to report that we are uh, ready to clear that standard as well. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. 
No questions or comments forward. Okay, thank you, Dr. Davidson. Okay. Now, you are next up for the action item information, correct? Yes. Uh, item A and B, do you want to discuss them together? Yes, I can. Uh, item A is the recommendation to adopt the outcomes of the intellectually gifted education program for our district. And these outcomes were developed by the Mississippi Department of Education. And it is presented before you so that we can adopt per the uh, corrective action plan. So board members, you've heard uh, Dr. Davidson and we received the materials for item A, recommendation to adopt the outcomes teaching and learning guide for the gifted education program. Are there questions or comments? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve the recommendation? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing on item A is approved. Uh, Dr. Davidson, okay. item B. Okay, item B is the recommendation to approve the addendum to the handbook for school year 2017-2018. And we did uh, receive this information earlier and you might share why it's important that we have an addendum to our okay. handbook? The addendum is required per our corrective action plan that we would provide parents with any, uh, uh, any policies that have been revised. And most recently, <coughs> policy IGAB uh, related to grading was revised and also the uh, graduation requirements policy IGB was revised earlier in the year and we are to provide that information and share it with parents. Is it, <coughs> is it IGBA or AB? Is it IGBA or AB? AB, IGAB. Okay, okay. In the agenda it's reflecting BA. Okay, okay. I apologize for that. Do we need to amend the agenda then? If it's really I don't think correct. so. You can just um, have the minutes reflect that it's corrected um, on the agenda and as part of the board's um, order. Okay. okay. So, Ms. Rock, Ms. Williams, thank you for correcting that. And thank you. Thank you. Dr. Thank you. Davidson and the policy team is on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions or comments regarding item B? Do I hear a motion to uh, approve the addendum? Reflecting the correction to the policy name and the agenda item. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Reflecting that correction, so moved. A second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Hearing none, item B is approved okay. with the correction on the agenda and in the document. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Interim Amendments. Uh, item C, Ms. Miller, approval of monthly financial report. Thank you again, Dr. Harrison, Dr. Murray, members of the board. I present to you the, the monthly financial report for the month ended April 28, 2018. I never know how many days are at the end of the month. Uh, the, budget, the report includes your statement of fund balance, your budget, um, your budget status report, your um, uh, reconciliation of bank accounts and also your cash flow accounts. I'd like to just make a note on the budget side that um, the revenue as of April, we've collected about 84.4% of our revenue. The good part of this is we've only expended 79% of our expenditures. So as long as we can keep that trend going, I believe that we should be in good shape for the end of the year. Again, we've received pretty much all of our um, tax dollars for the year, our, our major funds of Avalorum. So we'll be looking um, to end the year in the um, black and making sure that we are monitoring our expenditures. At this point in the year, nobody likes me very much because we hold all expenditures to nothing but critical and instructional related um, or and or cap related um, facilities upgrades. So we are committed at the end of the year to make sure that uh, we don't exceed the budget and uh, we will certainly uh, look forward to bringing you uh, that report at the end of the year. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Ms. Miller regarding the monthly financial report? 
This information was distributed earlier. Do I hear a motion to approve the monthly financial report? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the, approve, uh, the monthly financial is approved. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Thank you. Item 10, consent agenda items under finance. Ms. Miller, all of these are yours, A through K. <laughs> <laughs> and if you would like, I'll just read them all at one time and we can go through it. Uh, item A is the approval to extend bid number 2285 for dairy products to Prairie Farms for the period August 1st, 2018 through July 31st, 2019. Um, this is an extension, a one-year extension, and the vendor has met all of our requirements and is holding all prices the um, firm. Item B is the approval to ex extend bid number 3008 for bakery products to Bimbo bake Bakeries for the same time period, August 1, 2018 through July 31st, 2019, again, holding all um, <coughs> prices firm. Item C is the approval to operate the summer food service program in the district. And I do want to highlight that this is the 27th year that um, the district has had this um, program in the district. Uh, we've I, I, these are amazing numbers. Over 4 million mm -hmm. lunches and 2 million breakfasts during the 17-18 school year. This program is free to the public. It allows anyone from, um, from 0 to 18 to eat free during the summer. We have 12 um, sites to operate this summer. And if you would like, may I please, please um, read them please so read the public them. will know where to go. Blackburn Middle School, Clausell Elementary, Galloway Elementary, Hardy Middle School, Key Elementary, Lake Elementary, Lanier High School, McWillie Elementary, North Jackson Elementary, Oak Forest Elementary, Powell Middle School, and Rowan Middle School. The program is going to run from June 4th through July 13th, and then lunch will be served at each school, and afternoon snacks will be served at Blackburn, McWillie, Galloway, and Key. And we anticipate serving approximately 94,000 lunches and about 13,000 snacks. So this is a wonderful program that this district has had for uh, 27 years, and we are very mm -hmm. proud to present that for your approval again tonight. Um, item D is approval of various donations. I shall not read all of them, but we certainly appreciate our public for the generous donations and know that each one of them receives a personal thank you from the superintendent on behalf of the board for their support of our schools. Um, item F is the recommendation to approve two form well to approve one formal bid. Uh, item 3070 to food service for food service warehouse food, and that is for all the vendors who have met the specifications for the lowest and lowest and best of each of the items listed in your board material. And item um, bid number 3069 is the proposal to reject all bidders for the Davis roofing project that exceeded the budget. We will re bid that project. Item G is the approval of disbursements and accounts payable and activity fund claims for, for the period of April 21st through uh, 2018 through May 4th, 2018. Item H is a approval of the 16 section rental adjustment between JPS and the city of Jackson for Lake Heiko Park. Item I is the request to ratify the lease agreement between JPS and Clark Real Estate Investments, LLC. Item J is the request to ratify the lease agreement between Jackson Public Schools and Layton J. Smith. And item K is the approval to award bid number 3072 to probity contractors for the improvements to the South Jackson football field. This um, is a rebid of this project, if you recall, a couple of weeks ago. And this is in direct response to, um, I think it's standard 30 finding in the cap mm -hmm. that address the South Jackson field. Mm -hmm. So we will be very pleased to have some improvements at the field um, in the fall. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I do um, appreciate your elaborating a little bit on the summer food service program. And I have a couple of quick questions. OK, Ms. Hill is here. Oh, so yay. I absolutely want to yes. bring the That's how matter I know expert. How, <laughs> about how good this program is through Ms. Hill. But um, are there? Are there ways to engage some of our school partners in, in, in this opportunity, like when the schools are open and we're serving children and families, or children and young adults, I guess, because you've got to be 18? As far as bringing in um, well, just 
I don't know, to help find ways to support and be a part of something that's really meeting the needs of our community. Well, we really, um, we really focus our um, summer feeding sites on those places there, are going to be either the Boost Program or the summer um, schools. Good. And also, um, a lot of the neighborhood uh, groups that have summer programs, they bring the children to Good. us. So that's a big boost Good. for us is because you know a lot of our kids are not in the school in the summertime. It's also, uh, Ms. Hill strategically places those in areas that we have a lot of foot traffic. So there are people from the community who may not necessarily be JPS students, but they still get to eat Excellent. a meal. So there is a, a lot of community engagement, especially on the part of um, those summer programs, those daycare centers that have summer Excellent. programs, they bring their students over. So again, they're all our students at one point anyway, mm -hmm. and so we, we certainly look forward to that process. That's excellent. And all this will be posted on the web, yes, made accessible through social media and all like that. Yes, ma'am. And there's a usually a very, very colorful flyer that goes out to the sump, to the school with all the students, and so uh, it'll be well, I think it's well received. Great, thank you. Um, board, we received all this material earlier. Are there any other questions or comments? I, I got a question about um, the roof at Davis. Mm -hmm. um, I know that this is from the hailstorm back in 2013, so this roof's been a long time coming for them. Do we have any idea of um, a timeline for what this would require to, um, and, and how we correct the issue of receiving bids that go over the limit? Let me ask Mr. This. McCracken, I I'm see you st standing up to I'm going to answer the second question because I can, I'm going to let him deal with the, the technical. Um, we just have to maintain that we work with our vendors, make sure they go back out and walk the roofs and look at them again to make sure that they are giving us um, as close as possible, not only to the budget, but to what we really need at the schools and what's really needed at the, at the sites. And um, generally we get there, um, but we, if, if it comes to a point that we feel like, you know, it's just not gonna make it, it's not gonna do, but the school needs it, then we'll have to come up with other alternatives, um, you know, to make sure that that roof gets repaired. Of course, because it's um, insurance proceeds, that's what we have to use it for. So we have to make sure that that roof gets fixed. It, it, it affects our coverage later on down the line if we don't get it done. So we'll just keep working with this and at some point if we feel like our the vendors get with Mr. McCracken and feel like it's just not gonna make it for what is needed, then we'll have to come up with some other alternatives as far as funding. Thank you. <coughs> just to add to Mrs. Uh, Miller, uh, we do value engineering as well. So we get with the vendor, we get with the architect to see where there's some issues where the contractor may have added some additional uh, features and where the cost went up. Uh, right now it's right at 35% higher than normal, what we predicted or projected. That's a so lot. we felt that we could not award that particular project. So we've made some major corrections ourselves uh, so that that would cover us and carry us uh, uh, to the next uh, re-roofing cycle. So we, we will be able to do that next summer. Uh, but we have again made the corrections that we could that we could uh, at this juncture until next summer. Thank you. All right. I, I just want I was wondering if you could walk through the um, 16th section land leases yes. and it looked like a number I, were all of them staying the same or was there a change in maybe the one with Layton I think Smith. they all stayed the same. Lake Heiko stayed the same. Um, the Clark Real Estate stayed the same. And um, Apache, well, SNS Apache, which is Layton J. Smith, they stayed the same. Okay. Um, we are working very diligently with, uh, we have a new um, appraiser who um, does extensive work. And I'm, I'm very, very pleased with the work that he has done as far as giving us appraisal and comps for the area. Of course, most of our 16 section land being in South Jackson, south of Terry Road, it is a challenge uh, as far as getting comparables there. Um, we are anticipating though, we have two 
potentially two new lessees going into properties in South Jackson. Um, so we are still very heavily marketing that area, but again, the, the values are a challenge. But um, we are working very hard. If you'll notice, the last couple of times we had, we've had long-term leases, but some of our lessees, um, because of um, the maturing of the, the owners, they're coming out of the longer term leases and wanting to go to five to th three to five year leases again because and like with Clark there's been a change from the father to the sons and so there's been some change there but we're working really hard to make to help them to stay in the area um, we're working with the Forestry Commission to help us on, on weeding out if there's timber in the area or trash in the area the city of Jackson helps us a lot with going through to make sure that the properties are, are at least um, helped to be free from debris and our campus enforcement works with Jackson Police Department to help us on uh, illegal dumping so we're doing everything we can to kind of encourage um, our tenants to stay in those areas but um, challenges <coughs> are the actual values of the properties in the area okay thank you thank you for your work thank you can we hold on over to you? Mm -hmm. uh, having heard the discussion and received and read the materials board uh, do I hear a motion to approve all of the items, uh, finance items, presented by uh, Ms. Miller from A through K as listed on the agenda? So moved. Second? Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, these finance consent agenda items presented by Ms. Miller have been approved. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Item 11, Consent Agenda Items General, uh, Dr. Marshall Thomas for A and B. Thank you. A and B are for our um, eighth grade balls for Hardy Middle School. They are having an eighth grade um, middle school gala and Witten Middle School also an eighth grade ball at the two venues listed. I smiled when I read those. <laughs> And it seemed very reasonably priced, too. Yeah, <laughs> so. a great deal. Um, board members, you have uh, received these materials and read them and thought about them. Do you have any questions or comments for Dr. Marshall Thomas? Hearing none, do I hear a motion <coughs> to approve the two consent agenda items A and B? So moved. Second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that these two agenda items A and B presented by Dr. Marshall Thomas, be approved. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing on these two agenda items have been approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Colonel Paul Willis, U.S. Army retired. Item C. Thank you, Colonel Willis. Thank you, Madam President. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Madam President, the information presented in your packet pertains to our annual consolidated military gala we conduct each year at the Jackson Convention Complex. We expect an annual uh, average participation of about 950 attendees to this event. It's been a highly successful event each year and we're looking forward to another success this coming December. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Board, you've received these materials and had an opportunity to review them. Do you have questions or comments for Colonel? <coughs> Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve the uh, agreement to hold the ROTC ball? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, this Everything. item has been approved. Thank you Thank so you much, much, Colonel Mark. Willis. Uh, Ms. Miller, on behalf of Ms. <laughs> Lyons. Oh, the assisted housing, another, <laughs> another happy thing. <laughs> yes, board members, uh, I present for your approval, the approval of the uh, Mississippi Employers, Employer Assisted Housing Teacher Program Loan Agreement between um, the Mississippi Department of Education and a teacher at Power APAC School. Thank you. We received this material earlier. Board, do you have questions for Ms. Miller? Help our teacher get a home? Yes. Uh, hearing no questions or comments, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, this has been approved. Thank, Thank you, you Ms. Miller. 
Item 12, Consent Agenda Item Personnel. Yes, again. Oh, there you are, Ms. Miller. <laughs> <laughs> again, board members, I present for your approval the information included in your board material for staff personnel matters related to resignations, retirements, change of assignments, part-time and limited service, employment, and also new hires, both for school years 17-18 and also 18-19. Okie doke. Ms. Miller, I have a question on the recommendations. Can you explain that? Are those, have those contracts been issued or signed? For 17-18 or 18-19? 18-19. 18-19. Uh, no, we, once you approve them, then we will issue those contracts. Got it. Thank you. Any insights on our, uh, well, I'll, I'll say this. I'll put something in writing for some additional questions okay. later. Cause I'm interested in the analysis of our teachers and, and the, what the exit interviews say when we have teachers. I, oh, I thought we had that information. Oh, yes, ma'am, and we do have it, um, and um, I haven't had a chance to analyze it in detail. I kind of know the generals, no, but okay. I will be happy to yeah. provide that information. I'll shoot you an email for some specifics. Absolutely. Dr. Murray, at this point for our four schools that are closing, do we have a sense of how many of those teachers we'll be able to retain in Jackson yet? Uh, pretty much uh, about 80 percent yeah, 80 over 80 percent most of those teachers have been placed uh, a few uh, at one school I, I could think of uh, we lost a couple of teachers but for the most part over 80 percent we've placed already mm -hmm. that's great thank you miss Miller have you had a chance to check with any Houston teachers no ma'am but we did um, and you approved the board approved uh, at the last board meeting our recruiter and so we we kind of engaged him on the side and he has <laughs> started reaching out um, very very excited about um, having mr. Niles with us he's actually we've actually kind of nudged him on the, on his other at his at his leisure time to do some other mm -hmm. stuff. So, yes, man, we ad addressed um, Houston, and uh, we are looking at some uh, other alternatives and some things about creatively going out looking for teachers. We look forward to hearing any updates you can give us on that process and ways that we might be able to help. Absolutely, thank you. Do we anticipate any additional um, changes for the remainder of the fiscal year? As far as um, salary staffing, changes, yeah, staffing related should not. Um, we're so close to the end, and you know, teachers' last day is the 25th, so we don't anticipate any additional changes for the current year. Most of what you will see will be changes for next year. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Do we have any other questions or comments from Ms. Miller? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the staff personnel matters as presented under consent agenda item 12A? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, this item has been approved. Thank, Thank you, Ms. You. Miller. Do we have uh, other business? Need we consider to hold an executive session? I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to grab it too soon. <laughs> I love this board time. Much love and respect, but it's amazing that uh, we're able to adjourn. Need a motion. Ah, uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, close this business and adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned. See you soon. <laughs> See you at graduation. <laughs>